One will. There is no submission within God. Add intra. There's add extra submission as the son becomes a human being. But within God, they are really co-equal. You've got to get your idea of Jesus Christ up there. It is up there. Higher than you can soar. He's God the Son. Co-equal with God the Father. Uh, theologians, when we talk about um, God's election, talk about God's choosing of those that He will save, or as Jesus says in John's Gospel, the Father the, that He gave me, those that the Father gave me, right? When did the Father give them to the Son? In eternity past. The salvation, 2 Timothy 1 says, was granted to us from all eternity, says. So this deal between the Father and the Son happened way back when, eternity past. It's called the covenant of redemption by theologians. The deal between the Father and the Son. But a better word than covenant is the word pact. When we think about a covenant, the covenants in the Bible that God gives, you know, God didn't make deals with, with Abraham or Adam when he gave covenants to them. He didn't make deals with Israel. Hey, I'll make this deal and you check it out, make some corrections and get back to me. Our loyals will talk and we'll come to some sort of conclusion in the middle. That's not how covenants work in the Bible. God gives them the covenant. He enforces it. He tells them what it's going to be like. God has the authority in the covenant, and the humans receive the covenant. The word pact, however, carries the idea of being on equal plane with each other, driving a bargain. And that is what we have in eternity past between the Father and the Son, a pact. Both sides made requirements of each other. The Father required the Son to submit in time and space as a human. But it is no less true to say that the Son required of the Father His bride for that. They both made requirements co-equal. They're driving the bargain together. Remember, they have one will. And then in the economy of salvation, the son submits.